Hello, welcome to another module of this course, Microwave Integrated Circuits. In the last module, we introduced, uh, we uh, discussed about uh, couplers and we also discussed about two specific types of couplers, the branch line coupler and the rat trace coupler. In this module, we shall be discussing the coupled line coupler. So, let us see what is a coupled line coupler. A coupled line coupler consists of two pieces of transmission line which are side by side. So, the construction of a coupled line coupler is quite simple. The ports are labeled like this. So, if this is the input port, this is the isolated port, this is the coupled port and this is the through port. Now, uh, the difference between a coupled line coupler and the other couplers that we have discussed so far is that we cannot take a single value of this characteristic impedance for both the systems. Now, even in a branch line coupler, for example, the vertical lines had Z1 and the, uh, sorry, the horizontal lines had a characteristic impedance Z2, whereas the vertical lines had a characteristic impedance Z2. Z1 and Z2, but here uh, because of the physics involved, there is the concept of the even mode, uh, even mode characteristic impedance and the odd mode characteristic impedance. So, let us see what are these even mode and odd mode characteristic impedance. Consider a cross section of a coupled line, two coupled lines. So, we have one couple line here and another couple line here. Suppose the width of this is W, spacing is S. Now, there will be capacitance between the two. So, there will be an inter line capacitance phi 1 2 and there will be capacitance between the top metal and the bottom metal which is represented by C 1 1. Now, in the consider that when the voltages on both are the same, if the voltages on both the lines are same, then this, uh, this central capacitor does not play any role. So, the total capacitance between the between the top metal and the bottom metal is simply P effective is equal to C 1 1. Now, we know that Z 0 for the even mode should be given by L upon C effective. We call C effective is the capacitance per unit length and this equation we had discussed while discussing the equation for the transmission lines. And this can also be written in this way. So, in this case for the even mode when the voltages on both the lines are the same total C effective we saw is equal to C 1 1. So, then Z 0 E or the characteristic impedance for the e even mode is simply C 1 1. For the odd mode when one line has is charged at a positive volt and the other one is at a negative voltage, then the, so, so in this case if we redraw that cross sectional diagram, in the odd mode means one is at a, each are at equal and opposite voltages. So, in that case, uh, the capacitance that exists between the lines C 1 2 that we draw a line through it that can be considered as a combination of two series capacitances 
टू सी वन टू टू सी वन टू and since this is positive and this is negative and the voltages are equal and opposite hence this line must represent the shock and therefore c effective assuming of course c11 is same as c22 they are identical if they are identical these two lines are identical then c11 will be equal to c22 and c effective will be simply equal to c11 plus 2c12 So in that case, for the odd mode, Z O O will be given by now this is lesser than Z zero even as we had seen. So this is something that we have to understand for the coupled lines. there is the concept of uh, odd mode and even mode impedances characteristic impedances and we saw that the even mode characteristic impedance is greater than the odd mode characteristic impedance now with this uh, knowledge uh, let us proceed to the coupled line coupler so the coupled line coupler as i said is again very simple in construction and uh, so this is the input port say this is the isolated port now s11 s31 s21 and s41 uh just like we had seen the seen the case for the branch line coupler so here again the equations for these s parameters can be written in terms of the s parameters of the even and odd modes like this here of course one difference is that s31 is now equal to this instead of s21 as we had seen uh, which was Uh, say for the branch line hybrid s21 was equal to s11 e upon 2 minus s11 o upon 2 in this case this is s31 now this is a uh, this coupled line coupler consists just of two pieces of transmission lines so the for the even and odd modes the cascades or abcd matrix is very simple it's same as that of a transmission line of length of electrical length theta <coughs> except that instead of uh, z0 being same for the even and odd modes we will have two different values of z0 one for the even mode and one for the odd mode and then using these this abcd matrix we can write down the s11 and s41 uh we can find out the s11 and s41 parameters using the conversion uh, equation now we want s21 equal to 0 so to achieve that first thing is that you know if s41 e minus s41 o should be equal to 0 then the denominators for the even on odd mode of s41 should be the same and that is the case if this condition is satisfied this we can just looking at this equation also we can find that out if the denominators have to be equal then z0 o plus y0 o that is this equation this expression should be equal to z0 e plus y0 e now on solving this equation we get this value so the relationship between z0 e and z0 o is given by this where z0 is the matching impedance or the impedance to which the coupler is connected at all the ports you could skip this slide other thing uh, that we note is that if this that condition if the denominators are equal then the condition of matching that is s11 
equal to S11 E plus S11 O is whole upon 2 equal to 0 is automatically satisfied. So, therefore, for the coupled line coupler, we obtain broadband matching that is if uh, they are always matched. Now, the cup S31 parameters and S41 parameters can be found out using this equation which we have already discussed and then from the value of Z0 given by this equation. So, S31 is found out from S11 E minus S11 O, S11 E and S E O and S41 E O we have already found out. Plugging these values into these two equations, we get this as the expression for S31 and this as the expression for S41. Now, here S31 uh, contains as you can see both this S31 and S41 contains a term Kc. Kc is defined by this equation. It is like a measure of the mismatch between Z0e that is the characteristic impedance of the even mode and Z0o which is the characteristic impedance of the odd mode. And on solving for Z0 E and Z0 O in terms of Kc and using this equation, we can get the following equation for uh, Z0 E and Z0 O in terms of Kc and Z0. So, we have analyzed the coupled line coupler and found out these equations. Now, when you want to design this coupler, you have to however go in the opposite direction. You will be given a certain Kc and you will be asked to find out Z0 E and Z0 O and then from Z0 E and Z0 O we can find out the C effective on and from C effective we can find out the inter uh, interline capacitance and the capacitance between the line and the ground plane and from there we can completely design our system. If we further go back to the slides once again. Uh, the S31 and S41 parameters if we plot, if we plot their squares, then the sum of the magnitude square of S31 and S41 will always be constant. However, S31 represented by square represented by this red line and S41 square represented by this dotted line will vary. This is of course logical, this shows that the total power leaving from S port 3 and port 4 is equal to the total power entering port 1. So, we have uh, discussed a number of couplers in this course. Uh, so, uh, we first started with magic T which is an example of a 180 degree coupler. Then we discussed about branch line coupler and the and the couple line coupler, which are examples of the of the 90 degree couplers. And just to show you one thing that it is indeed a 90 degree coupler, if you can go once to the slides on the monitor, you see that S31 and S41 are phase shifted by 90 degree due to the presence of this J term. Hence, it is indeed a 90 degree coupler. So, uh, so in summary, we saw that couplers represent four port microwave devices and there are various kinds of couplers. Uh, 90 degree couplers are one which provide a phase diff shift of 90 degree between the coupled and through ports. 180 degree couplers are one which provide a 180 degree phase shift between the coupled and through ports. Now, you might ask me what is the application of a coupler? Because if a coupler is just uh, is just providing power division between the coupled and the through ports, then it looks very similar to a power divider. So let us see some applications of uh, a coupler. One major application of a coupler is in a network analyzer. As you know, network analyzer are devices for finding up which directly measure the S parameters of the circuit or a device under test or DUT as we call them. 
Now, since a network analyzer actually deals with the reflected and incident wave and we saw that the reflected and incident waves are not so easy to separate, then the couplers come handy in separating the incident and reflected wave. Now, here we have a RF source supplying a certain incident wave to this coupler. Now, a part of this input signal will go to the coupled port, no part of the input signal will come back to the, will go to the isolated port. Now, here of course, note one thing that this port is isolated with respect to this port only. It however, acts as a coupled port with respect to this port. For this port, this port is the isolated port. Now, after the incident wave, travels through the through port and it reaches the DUT that is the device under test and there it undergoes some reflection which is B1 which is represented by the normalized voltage B1. Now, this B1 will again see this port as the input port. No part of this input signal here will go to this port and all the signal will pass through this coupled port. So, for this port, this is the coupled port. So, this way we have completely separated A1 and B1 and thus we can find out the ratio of A1 and B1. So, this is one important application of a coupler. One other application, important application of a coupler is in IQ modulators. Here we use the 90 degree couplers. So, assume this is an LO or local oscillator source inputting connected to the input port of a coupler. At the coupled port, there will be a 90 degree phase shift with respect to the through port and this in turn will be multiplied with this I and Q signals which are baseband signals and then when they are passed through what we call a combiner, a combiner is nothing but a power divider in reverse, we will get the combined signal which is a frequency modulated signal. If we want to do the demodulation, so this is a modulation function. If we want to do the demodulation function, then also couplers come in handy. Here we have that modulated signal passing through a multiplier. The other end of this multiplier is connected to an LO signal, which produces two signals which are 90 degree phase shifted, and this in turn when multiplied lead to and pass through a low pass filter produce the I and Q signals back. So, this way we recover the I and Q signals from the RF input or the modulated input. One other important application of a uh, coupler especially the 90 degree coupler <coughs> is in what we call balanced amplifiers. Now, in a, a balanced amplifier is an amplifier where the S11 parameter is 0 over a wide frequency range. The way these balance amplifiers achieve that is not that it reduces the reflected, reflected signal from an amplifier, but it kind of causes the reflected signal to be diverted to the isolated port. So, this will be clear once I explain this. You need to have two identical amplifiers. These two identical amplifiers are connected to a coupler as shown. Now, any input signal that reaches port 1, it will be divided in po at port 3 and port 4. Here at port 3 and port 4, they will undergo reflection and this reflected waves will again be power divided at port 3 and port 4. Now, it can be shown that on division, the signal reaching port 2 from this amplifier and the signal reaching port 2 from this amplifier will add constructively at port 2, whereas the signal reaching port 1 from this amplifier and the signal reaching port 1 from this amplifier will add destructively at this point. So, if they are adding destructively, it means that no reflected wave appears at port 1 and all reflected waves appear at port 2. 
So, this way at port 1 there is no net reflected wave coming and hence the S11 appears to be 0. Now, here I must mention this appears to be, there is not that the reflected wave does not exist, it is simply that we are diverting it to port 2. A similar uh, circuit is what is called a balanced filter. Now, a filter by definition is not matched at all frequencies. For example, a high pass filter will reflect back low pass signal and only allow high, high frequency signals to pass through them. Now, the principle for a balanced filter is exactly the same as that for a balanced amplifier that is at port 2 the reflected waves add constructively and at port 1 the reflected waves add destructively. As a result, even though a filter is fundamentally not matched for the low pass low frequency signals, at the input port we will not see any reflected signal. Hence, the input port remains remains matched over a wide frequency range. Now, this is at the input side of the filters and the output side of the filters also we can apply a simple similar logic and so the output port will also be matched over a wide frequency range. One other important application of a field of a coupler is what is known as a bias T. Now, a bias T is one which combines DC signal with RF signal and this kind of combined RF and or high frequency and DC signals is used necessary for various microwave devices like amplifiers or mixers. Now, because this is a simple, there is a simple metal connection between the input RF and the output and this simple metal connection is enforced by these wires which are connected between them between the arms of a coupler and since the, these wires will not allow RF to pass through them and only DC to pass through them. So, any DC signal appearing at this port will be will be passed on to the output, but then this is the isolated port with respect to this port. So, no component of this RF signal will appear here and since this is the coupled port a component of the input RF signal will appear at this port. So, we will both the DC and RF will appear at this point and so we can combine the two. So, in summary a coupler is a very widely uh, used microwave device, it is a very useful device. There are some more advanced uses of a coupler also which we have not discussed uh, and the good thing about a coupler is that it can be matched be reciprocal and lossless without any mathematical restrictions. It has wide range applications and as we saw that there are various types of coupler for example, the 90 degree coupler or the 180 degree coupler. So, that is all about four port devices and microwave devices in general. In the next module, we shall be discussing about filters. Thank you.